Hey everybody, Joe Baker here with the Edit Bay. So a couple days ago, Adobe finally released the newest version of Adobe Creative Cloud. And while Adobe's been telling us for months about some of the amazing features that they've put into this newest release, let's take a look at some of the lesser known features and upgrades that we're gonna be enjoying in the latest version of Adobe CC. So Adobe's been touting this latest release for a couple of months now, so you've no doubt heard about the newest additions to the Lumetri color panel right here in Premiere. In fact, I'll go ahead and demonstrate one of those really quick. Let's switch over to color. We now have a white balance selector, so I can use the eyedropper tool, select something that's neutral gray here in this image. Before I do that, come take a look at the RGB parade over here. You can see that this is a more blue image than it is red. But if I select something neutral gray, it'll even that out pretty nicely. Simple, but a useful tool. One of the features you may not yet be aware of is that Adobe now has native support for Apple ProRes files. A couple of months ago, I released a video on what to do or what to expect when you uninstall QuickTime from your machine. QuickTime, of course, is used to uh, encode and decode certain video files, ProRes being one of them. And after a vulnerability was identified by um, Homeland Security, it was recommended that we remove QuickTime from your computer. Whether or not that really puts your computer at risk remains to be seen. If I had to guess, so Adventure is probably not that big of a deal, but there are some people who like to play it safe. So if you uninstalled QuickTime from your computer, it's no longer an issue. Adobe is now has native support for this, so you can simply drag and drop these files right into your timeline, and you've got the same playback that you've always had. Let's actually switch over to Photoshop to talk about some features that were added to Photoshop. We only got a couple. One is Adobe has now added content aware technology to the crop tool. So if I enable the crop tool on this layer, ordinarily when we crop, we go down and move into the picture. But if you were to go out of the picture with this content aware button selected up here, once I hit OK, Photoshop will analyze this image and fill in that transparency up there. Pretty handy feature. And the second feature they added is more of a niche type feature, but I'm going to go ahead and hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E. I'm going to create a new layer. Let's turn that into a smart object just in case we want to come back. But they've done something pretty slick with the Liquify tool, the Liquify filter. So I'm going to come up to Filter, Liquify. What it's going to do is it's going to automatically analyze the image and it's going to identify my face, my facial features. So if I zoom in right now, um, I've got, I've now have sliders for some more common adjustments that you might want to do to somebody's face. So if I want to adjust the eye size, down, up, the height, most of these are self-explanatory, the tilt, self-explanatory. We've got tilt, the eye width, and we also have features for the nose. We have nose height, width. Mouth, we can actually increase a smile. I mean, this looks a little bit ridiculous, but subtlety is the key with this tool. I actually do a lot of portrait work and I do use Liquify quite a bit, not so much on the face, but the important part is to be really subtle with it. I've yet to be called out by a client. All right, let's go ahead and hit okay. So here's one of my favorite features that they've added to Adobe Audition. Never mind the sound panel, which is awesome, but this is just a workflow thing. Um, ordinarily, when I do a video, I start cutting everything in Premiere. Once I've got picture lock, I'll send any clips that I need to to After Effects, bring those back into Premiere after I've done all my compositing and visual effects work. Then I'm going to send my audio into Audition, do all of my post audio, send that back to Premiere. Then I'm going to take my entire project, send that to Adobe Media Encoder for my final export render. So there's a lot of back and forth in there. So what Adobe's done now is they've streamlined things. Let's say I need to send this sequence over to Adobe Audition. Let's do that now. I'm going to take, go up to Edit, Edit in Adobe Audition. I'm going to send the entire sequence. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. So now inside of Adobe Audition, I can Go ahead and select, say, multiple tracks. I can even use the new Essential Sound Panel. Let's reduce some noise, do a couple of things. We'll reduce rumble. Now, instead of sending this back to Premiere to do my final export, I can send the entire movie directly into Adobe Media Encoder. So this is pretty slick. Now we just have to come up here to File, Export, Export with Adobe Media Encoder. And this is where we can start to choose our parameters. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this Test. Export 
Adobe Media Encoder. Let's use H.264 and let's do HD and hit OK. And this will launch Adobe Media Encoder. Let's see, it's rendering it out and it's done. All right, I hope you're as excited about some of these new features as I am. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the box below. Until next time, I'm Joe Baker with the Edit Bay. Thanks for watching.